I'm Christina, and I'm so glad that you're here with me today. If you're new, welcome in. If you're returning, welcome back. No matter how long you've been here, I always appreciate your time. Today we are here for another book review. Now this is going to be in my book look series, uh, but I am not um, going through actual like passages of the book because... That's not what this is for, and it's a copyrighted book, so I don't want to share um, things that, you know, one, could get me in trouble, and two, uh, you know, you need to read for yourself, because it's awesome. Uh, so today we are going to be looking at Vanishing Fleece. Right. This is by Clara Parks and Clara goes on a journey to, um, see how wool is made in America. Um, I was trying to think of the best way to put it. So, uh, here it says inside inside the book cover, Clara Parks presents a fast-paced account of the year she spent transforming a 660 set, 660, nope, that's not what this says. Clara Parks presents a fast-paced account of the year she spent transforming a 676 pound <laughs> bale of wool into commercial yarn and the people and vanishing industry she discovered along the way. So that is just the little um, sentence inside the book jacket here. And uh, this was also a part of Kim at Afford Affordably Crafty's uh, Crafty Book Club. This was book three. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video that I did read-ish book two, but I did... Um, give it away to a friend who actually ended up loving it and reading more of the series for that book. Uh, and Kim did a discussion on that book. So, um, I will leave that to her. Um, it's just not my kind of, of story. It wasn't a bad story. It just wasn't my favorite. So I don't want to share. Um, I don't ha physically have the book anymore, so I don't want to discuss it if I don't have it because I don't want to say something incorrect or anything like that. So we are here to talk about book three, right, in the Crafty Book Club series. And one thing that I appreciate about this book um, and Kim selections in general is that um, they really span a spectrum. So for example, I was not really into book two, but book one, book three, right? I really enjoyed those books. Um, some people did not like this, um, type of, of writing and that's okay, right? It really is. It's okay to like one particular genre of book and not another. Um, I found this fascinating because I was not aware of some of the, uh, issues concerning um, yarn making and how, especially in America, it is, it really is vanishing. And this made me think about, you know, people who spin their own yarn and what that goes into. There are lots of YouTube channels out there where people are um, spinning and creating their own fibers. Um, there are two that I watch, um, of course, Spring the Fiber Enthusiast, and there's another one. I want to say it's Sparkle Yarn, 
but I could be wrong in the name. I'll link it in the description box below. But I love just playing the videos of, of spinning uh, or carding or any of those things while I'm crocheting um, because it's very soothing for me. Uh, it's the carding especially is like ASMR. There's not really any talking. It's just the, the brushing and the twisting and the laying of the different fibers together and, and blending it all together. So I really, I really like that. And that goes into part of this, uh, but it also talks about some of the people along the way and, um, some of the knowledge that is, it's lost. Um, and when I say lost, I mean not widely known. So there are people who still do it and there are people who still know how to do it, but on a large scale, like it used to be, it's just not done anymore. And that can be, that can be hard. Um, because it's something that, um, is not only useful, but fun. Uh, now I'm not saying shearing sheep, it would be fun for me, right? But I like the wool that comes out of it. So the fact that that process, um, is becoming more and more commercialized and less and less, um, people friendly, you know, um, I guess, and, and animal friendly is a little disheartening for me, but, um, it does still exist, right? It does still happen. And this journey, uh, that Clara Parks takes us on is wonderful. And, um, when I say wonderful, it's not all, you know, rainbows and, and sunshine, but it is a very eye-opening and inspiring and just, I'm glad I, I'm glad I read it and I would recommend that you read it as well. Uh, there was a book talk that, uh, Kim did as well for this book. And like I said, I will link that playlist. Um, it will probably be up here as well as in the description box below. But I, I really want to go deeper into the book, but I don't want to, um, I don't know. I just, I don't, I, one, I don't want to get in trouble and two, I don't want to give away too much, but this is something that I really appreciated. Um, and there are some of these quotes in, in the book. So I'm just going to read this one in yarn as in life. There are good neps and bad neps. There's a time for cream of rice cereal that you could drink through a straw. And there's a time for lumpy, wholesome, steel cut oatmeal. And that's kind of the journey of the book, right? There's the good, the bad, the beautiful, the sad. So much just in this book. And it's not, it's not a very long read, right? So it's not something that is going to take forever. Um, if you're not a fan of reading, but I highly, highly recommend it. So, uh, if you have any questions, definitely check out Kim's video videos cause she did a opening on this book and then she did a discussion on the book. Uh, and I will, would welcome any comments or anything down below as well. Um, if you have thoughts on this book, if you read it along with Kim, uh, or if you've read it previously, I'd love to know your thoughts and I hope to see you again very soon. Be the change you wish to see in the world, everyone. Ciao, Bella.